recording this, which I'm starting. And uh, let's see, we've got some people showing up already. Very nice as people welcome. I want to welcome everybody. We're going to have some fun tonight. And uh, I'm looking forward to spending time with all of you. And we'll give it about two more minutes before we get started because um, some people are using Zoom for the first time and all of a sudden they realize there's a little download and then the stress starts out and they don't know what to do and they're trying to get on and they can't get on and the usual stuff. So, um, oh, that's right. And I'm also going to bring on, as a matter of fact, so I'm going to do this right now. If I can figure out, bear with me for a minute. Um, I am looking at it. There's Mike. I'm going to. I'm also going to bring on Dr. Mike to be with me tonight. You're all going to get a chance to meet him. And I think he's coming. No, I got the wrong person here. Okay, bear with me. I believe I made a mistake. And uh, I apologize for that person. I'm already making my first mistake. So there's a Marty and uh, he just surprisingly became a panelist for a moment. <laughs> so I'm sorry about that. Let's try if uh, I can get Mike again. And now I'm gonna bring Mike on. And uh, Mike, uh, un unmute yourself. You're going to get to talk pretty soon. Figure it out. You're a, you've done this before, so yep. there he goes. Hi, Mike. Hi. How you doing? I'm doing wonderful. Everybody, this yeah. is uh, Dr. Mike. Dr. Mike is our chief medical consultant. Um, He's the smart guy on the team. He's an Ivy League trained doctor, and and he keeps me uh, he, he keeps me in check. So, um, I think what I will do is I think it's six oh one. So I think we're going to get started. So first and foremost, I want to welcome everybody. It's so nice to have you here, and um, this time is for you. So I want you to know that I'm here to answer your questions. I'm here to help you. Uh, this is a bit unusual because normally these webinars are dedicated to physical pain. You know, zero pain now, physical pain. But um, I realized, talking to a lot of people lately, that, you know, the holidays are tough. We've got family or no family and problems here and financial and career and it's year end and, and all these things. And, and uh, I thought maybe it would be a great idea for you to be able to bring whatever you need help with. Um, met many of you, uh, let me give you a couple of ground rules first and then um, I'll get going. If you have questions, let me know. The, the best thing is if you have questions and you're willing to come on with us and I'll bring you, just like I did with Mike, I'll bring you to panel. Hopefully you've already done this. By the way, you look good <laughs> enough to be on camera if you have a camera on your computer, but the goal is to help people. It's the reason I'm here. So what you wanna do is in the Q&A, if you see down at the bottom, there's something that says Q&A and just put in there, type in there that uh, you wanna come on, you have a question. So put questions there. Also, there's a way somewhere uh, to raise your hand. Mike, on you, can you tell me? Because I, oh no, you're um, on your... I saw it before you made me a panelist. Now I'm not seeing it. It uh, was in the upper left hand. It was like in the upper left hand corner before, but now I'm not seeing right. it. So move your mouse around. And if you want to come on, raise your hand. And then I'll see that you want to come on and we'll bring you on and we'll have some fun. But this, remember, we're, it's for you. The time is for you. I have very very different than you've probably seen in, in webinars in the past because I, I don't come with a plan. I don't come with anything really to say. I just let it flow and whatever you guys want to ask or whatever you want help with is the direction that we go. And I'll, I'll 
you know, I'll give you a little background. I, 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 many of you don't really know, you may know who I am, but you don't necessarily know where I came from or even why there's a zero pain now or why we're doing any of these things. And especially this time, since I encourage people to come with anything, emotional, physical, and we'll see if we can, we can do some great things. So um, a lot of years ago, you know, on the, on the outside, my life looked fantastic. Um, had a pretty large business, had a wife, had a, you know, one-year-old, one-and-a-half-year-old son, drove BMWs or Mercedes, you know, my little house at the beach, ocean view, things looked really, really good. And, you know, on the exterior, they will, they were, but, you know, inside, I was a wreck. Miserable, miserable marriage, um, panic attacks and anxiety and claustrophobia and just, I, I was as big as a house and, and just felt horrible. And I realized one day that um, I had to do something to clean things up. So I decided the first thing was to get healthy and lose some weight, you know, did those things. And, and then there was all the emotional stuff that was left behind. It was a lot. And, um, you know, it was just miserable. So I started seeing what I could do to learn how to, how to clean that up, how to feel better. And I, you know, I went to workshops and, and, and all of a sudden things began to change and I was learning these techniques. And, and then I decided, well, there's trainings out there. And, and, and so I hopped into this, the, the first coaching training was from a, somebody who turned out to be a good friend of mine named Debbie Ford. And that went on for a couple of years. And I became a master integrative coach and all these things mostly to help myself. And, and during this process, I became fascinated with the brain and the mind and the body and how it works and how to make quick changes. And then I I went into neuro-linguistic programming and became a practitioner and a master practitioner and a trainer and a master trainer and, and tons of time studying that, studying the mind, studying the body, taking course after course after course, studying hundreds of texts on the brain and the mind and the body and how they work, doing research. And originally, I had come up with a, like a five-hour session and people from around the world would come. It was very, very successful. And they would come with problems like uh, they wanted to get over a divorce or bereavement or panic attacks, anxiety, phobias, uh, weight loss, addictions, you name it, any kind of problem. And I made this, this promise to them. And I said, bring any problem you have and we'll solve it in a five hour session or I'll give you your money back. And people came from all over the world and, and we just had these tremendous results. But something happened during almost every one of these sessions. And we'd be talking about why they came, divorce or weight loss, you know, whatever it was. And almost everybody would get this look of despondence in their eyes. And they would say, back pain, neck pain, shoulder pain, need surgery, had surgery, opioids, bulging disc, herniated disc, fibromyalgia, all this stuff. And it was almost every person. So I realized there had to be some link between emotions and stuff and tension and all that crap and physical pain. And I figured I could make a bigger contribution to the world if I could figure out how to do something about that. So. I set out to do some learning and found out there was a big body of work done by an orthopedic surgeon that had seen no benefit, people, surgeries for 20 years and not get better and kind of figured out this, this psychological cause of almost all chronic pain. So I figured, okay, I'll take six months. I'll get that down and move forward. Well, four years later, testing and, and, and trials and, and research the result was zero pain now and and that's gone forward from there and it's been very very successful and just finished a pilot with mayo clinic that was supremely successful and just um really helping thousands and thousands of people and i'll give a quick intro and then we're going to go to questions um 
I want to give a just a quick intro to, to Dr. Mike. Some of you have come on since. So Dr. Mike Amendolari is our chief medical consultant. He's um, an Ivy League trained doctor. He's a, he's a board certified family medicine. Probably the most interesting thing about him for this purpose is he had given over 50,000 pain injections to people. I, I can't imagine 50,000 pain injections. By the way, he's a big, strong looking. Can you imagine that guy coming at you with a syringe? I can think of very few things scarier than Dr. Mike coming at me with a big needle. Yeah. <laughs> 50,000 pain injections. And, um, and, and Mike, why don't you take, you know, a minute or two and just tell mm -hmm. a tiny bit about your, whatever you want, your experience with me, with this, tell any story you want to, you want to tell for a couple of minutes. Just to Sure, sure. Well, I mean, Adam and Zero Pain now changed my life because I, I was in chronic pain for 40 years and I started to realize that there was more to it than physical stuff. I knew, I started to realize that before I realized, discovered Adam, I knew there was something emotional going on. And then I discovered Zero Pay Now, and within, um, within for me, within six weeks, I was 98% pain-free. And I've had a couple of short relapses. I'm actually just getting over one right now. But overall, I've been 98% free from the pain that I was suffering for 40 years. And not only that, but uh, I trained to become a Zero Pay Now practitioner, and Adam taught me a lot of NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. And then he was good enough to help me with a, a NLP session, a rapid life change session, actually, so I could quit smoking because I had been smoking cigarettes for about 12 years. I had tried all the possible ways to quit. I had tried, um, you know, everything, medicines, uh, cold turkey, nicotine patches, vaping, everything. And then I had what I think was about a two hour NLP session, rapid life change session with Adam. I started the session being convinced I was a smoker and I had to smoke. By the end of the session, I was absolutely convinced I was an ex-smoker and I don't smoke anymore. And I have no desire to smoke. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm not like constantly trying not to smoke. Uh, you know, I, if I pass within a foot of someone who's smoking for like two seconds, I'll think, hmm, it would be nice to have a cigarette. Then five seconds later, I'm distracted by something else. I don't have a thought like that for a month. I literally expend absolutely no energy trying not to smoke. I have no desire to smoke. So uh, it's things like that, you know, that have brought me amazing freedom, you know, freedom from pain, uh, freedom from uh, a, bad, a really bad, unhealthy, compulsive habit, and, and other things. So it's, it's just very powerful. And, and, and um, you've been trained. You're helping other people. You sent me a note just yeah. the other day. Mm -hmm. That you had a, again, 15 seconds, but you had a session with somebody who'd been in, give me the back, quick background and what happened. Yeah, um, she, she's had back pain for years. Uh, she had been working with a therapist for the past year and really not making any progress in terms of getting, uh, getting free from her pain. She uh, knew that her pain was emotional, but just wasn't getting better. And I started working with her seven days ago and her pains come down a lot. We did the day number six uh, session where her pain came down from like an eight all the way down to a two. And she's still having a little bit ups and downs, but she's getting better and better at just recognizing her emotions. She did the uh, 15 minute process today where she asked right now, what emotion am I feeling? And her pain dropped down a lot while she was doing that. She's, so she's learning how to uncover those emotions and stop repressing emotions. And she's definitely getting free from the pain. So uh, and she's very happy about it. It's the Good. first progress she's made in this area in more than a year of trying to get free from pain. Thanks, Mike. And, and mm -hmm. by the way, this is, some of you have never heard anything here before and you hear motions. What does that have to do with pain? We'll talk a little bit of that as we help people on the call. I don't want this to be a teaching call. I want it to be, or a webinar, whatever. I want it to be a, a helpful one. What I will let you know is typically, typically um, people who have been in pain 30, 40, it doesn't matter. Typically, in a zero pain now is kind of like an antibiotic for pain. You, <laughs> you, you do the process and most people six, eight days later have either their pain just about gone or all gone. 
no touch, not in the same room. So we'll get into that. One thing before we get started, one more thing, is the questions that get asked tonight, you may not think have anything to do with you. I can promise you, I'm going to answer for everybody, even specific questions. So I would encourage you, invite you to pay attention. And just because somebody's talking about a bulging disc or depression or PTSD or some, don't think that because that isn't your issue, it isn't for you. I promise you that everything is tied together and I will answer in a way that will be both general and specific for everybody. So as a reminder, raise your hand if you have questions, type in your questions. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hang out as long as it takes to help you. If we don't have many questions, we'll all go on our way. So uh, I see, I'm going to start, I see a hand raised and the hand is raised by Patricia. So Patricia, what I'm going to do, as long as you're ready, you raised your hand. Thank you for doing that. I'm going to turn you into a presenter for a moment so that you'll come on with, with Dr. Mike and I, and uh, let's see if we can uh, help you feel better. Is that okay? I can't hear you, so I'm going to assume it is. So um, here comes Patricia. And all right, uh, there is Patricia. Hi there. Your microphone is muted. So somewhere, Mike, where's the, where was the button to unmute? Um, my, bottom left of my screen. Yeah, I mean, somewhere there's uh, a... It there. looks like a Hi. microphone and it says mute. There we Hi. go. Thank you. Thank you. Hi there. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. How are you? Well, a little, little good and a little not so good. Um, my, my pain, I've, I've talked to you off and on for a couple of years, and I think I've tried to start the program and then I would have just this, usually this horrible pain that would come and co totally distract me. And it was so bad that I could not believe it would be from my, what I'm feeling. And, and this last bout was June a year ago, I started getting horrible headaches. So bad that I would have them every day and on a scale from one to 10, they would always be at least a 10. And it went on and on, and I went to several neurologists and had every test run, and they never come up with anything. But the pain is so bad that, you know, I'm just, you know, I want to go slam my head on a car door. And finally, it got so bad, I was taking rounds of the pain uh, blockers, and, you know, all in my head. And I would be like 10 at a time, and I did three of those. And, you know, the pain would be so bad that literally I thought, I don't know how to get through a day, you know, with this pain so excruciating. And then they finally, you know, we're going to do Botox. And somehow I just, I don't know, I just, I thought I can't, I can't handle any more shots. I just can't handle shots. Um, medicine doesn't help it. You know, they give me all kinds of you know, everything. And I can't, I can't, I gotta get off, I, I gotta get off this cycle. And I, I just, you know, I know it, that they can't find something wrong. So, you know, help me with, make some sense of this because I can't stand the pain any longer. Well, I put, first of all, thanks for coming on. Thanks for sharing this. So you said a couple of things. I'm just gonna ask you a couple of questions. Okay. So, you said once that um, you start, like something to the effect of you start to do the program and then the pain comes. What does that mean? And again, in, in 15 seconds, what does that mean? What does it mean? When you say I start to do the program and then the pain comes, what do you mean by I start to do the program? Oh, um, I, would, I would, you know, I would get out, I'd get out the book, I'd get my stuff going, I'd go for like a couple of days and then I would have pain it would be so extremely bad that it would, okay. it would it would just take me away from it. Okay, and and um, that's its purpose. So that's a really really good example. So I know what do you have a what program do you have, if you have a program. I have the uh, the workbook and the and the CDs. Okay. Okay. Your... Good. Got it. Okay. So so that everybody knows what you said 
kind of what's supposed to happen. It's happening just right, but, and it where and it's winning. So as an overview, first of all, when you talk about headaches, one of my favorite calls of all time, and I didn't know it was coming and, and, it, and it, it, I was caught completely off guard. I'm sitting in my office and I answer the phone and this guy gives me his name and he says, I'm a CEO at Mayo Clinic. Didn't see that coming. And he goes, you say you have this 97% success rate. And he said, that sounds like quackery. And I said, yeah, I, I get it, but it's, you know, it's true, I mean, you know, you tell the truth. And then there's this pause and he goes, I have to tell you, I was having three migraines a week and I read your book. I didn't even do the program and I never had another headache. Now, this is the guy with the greatest medical care in the world who's telling me this. And that led to this pilot we did there. Um, the reason is, the reason the greatest doctors in the world couldn't help him is almost never are these things medical. And what we found, 90, you know, with the thousands of people, what we found is that the cause of almost all chronic or ongoing pain. So I'll give you a quick definition so everybody knows. Acute, if you break your foot, it hurts. Six weeks later, it's healed. So six, up to six weeks, we call acute pain. Anything after that, we call subacute or chronic. So that's where we're able to help people because after that period of time, so if something comes and goes like your headaches or something's there all the time, some people with back pain, sometimes it goes out a couple of times a month, what, whatever it is, we know that almost never does it have to do with physiology, with structure. So the incredible thing for all of you to know, first of all, for you, Patricia, to know is if that guy was having three a week and he could get better, you can get better. Um, two out of three people that have never had pain have bulging discs, herniated discs, spinal stenosis. These are studies. They've given them MRIs and they've done these studies and published them in big journals. So what we found, that, that proved that the typical medical treatments couldn't work because they were really treating symptoms. Guys like Dr. Mike were, were giving injections, trying to help people feel better, but then the pain would come back. It was like putting on lipstick. And it's, you know, it's great for a little while, but as soon as you take a few bites or whatever, the lipstick's gone, you got the old lips back. So what we found and have proven to be true over and over and over again is that pain starts in the brain. It has nothing to do with your, your back, your shoulder, your neck, your head. It's, it starts in the brain and then there are physical changes. It has to do with stress and it has to do with tension and more than anything, repressed emotions. We all have to get through our day, right? We've got to figure out some way to get through the day. And um, <coughs> most of us try and manage our emotions. The, the example I give in the book, is we all have some self-image. The example I give in the book is somebody who is a good mother, self-image, 13 or 14 year old in a wheelchair. So the good mother, it's not okay for her to be angry or really enraged with this in the wheelchair because she's a good mother. So what she does is those emotions just get shoved down. They're too dangerous. She doesn't even do it on purpose. It's as if they don't exist. She goes and takes great care of her kid. Next thing you know, she's having headaches like Patricia or back pain or neck pain, some kind of pain like that. So this process starts from there and it has to do with these emotions. So most important to address what Patricia said, and this is for everybody out there, she said she starts to do the process. And then when she said the pain gets so bad, I chase her away. So this is called diversion pain syndrome. It is the cause of 97% of chronic pain that isn't organic illness. We're not talking about cancer or MS pain. So the purpose is to divert your attention from some dangerous, unbearable emotion to something physical like pain. So... You know, in Patricia's case, as, as you get closer to the emotion, she starts to do the process. Her unconscious mind says, uh-uh, I don't want you near that emotion. Boom, she gets the headache. 
and it gets so bad that it pushes her away. Focus on the head, not the emotions. Now, probably what would have happened, Patricia, is if you just stayed with the process, and I, by the way, I'm not making light of how much pain came, but probably you were so close to ending it once and for all, the pain came and you went the other way. You stay with it. Had you stayed with that, had you, the, the process, by the way, for everybody is very well defined and it's step by step. Had you kept going, you probably would have ended the pain and it would have stayed away forever. There's a breakthrough point. And most people do it very quickly. And, and sometimes the pain rat goes up and then goes down to nothing. Other times it just goes down to nothing. Sometimes it goes away immediately. But, it's, but what you're saying is not so uncommon. So look, it's as simple as this, Patricia. Diversion pain syndrome symptoms are caused by repressed emotions that start a physiological process that lead to pain, tingling, burning, numbness, and weakness. If you want to get rid of it and you start the process, the key is to go through to the other side. And, and for those of you that haven't ever done anything, this isn't to scare you. It is, you know, not to, to worry, but, but the, the key is to unrepress the emotions and they will stop. So your mind may throw up some roadblocks and some obstacles as you go through. That's why, you know, listen, it's, it's a reason also people have private sessions often because somebody's there to help you pull through and do it rather quickly. That's not affordable for everybody. But this is a long answer to your question, but I really want you to get that the purpose is to divert your attention to pain. So if you start the process and you get pain, that's the time to keep going because all of a sudden there's no more pain. That's, hard. that's just so hard to believe that that could have gone, that that pain could have gone away if, you know, by just pulling out, because I've been pulling out for, I don't know, a while, but it's just hard to believe that with that kind of intense pain where you seriously want to slam your head in the car door, that that kind of pain could, can go away by just getting whatever, you know, emotions out of your system. I'm just it's not getting them out of your system. Remember, understand this concept because it's really, really important. The purpose is to divert your attention from an unbearable emotion to something physical like pain. You don't have to get it out of your system. You just have to become conscious of it. You have to acknowledge it. That's what the process is designed to do. So if your head is, if your unconscious mind is saying, you know, pain, 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 your, where's your attention? It's on the pain. If you keep it to the emotions, the pain will disappear. And it doesn't matter if it's your head or, I mean, or it's your back. It, it's, it, it doesn't matter where in the body is it, it, it is. And, and we're, we're, you know, we're talking to thousands of people. So it's only hard to believe because it's not what you've been told in the past. But you, you, you kind of gave me the proof to throw back at you and to mirror back at you. You start it and then, you see, there it is. There's the laugh. You get it. And then the pain comes. So you've already sort of proven it to yourself. Now it's just a matter of, of, of look, you have the process. Do it exactly as written. Exact, and, and, and you're going to get better. You're going to get better. Can I add something, Adam? Please. Um, Patricia, um, yeah. one thing is um, I, I understand how when pain is excruciating, it can be difficult to concentrate and focus. So I totally understand that. But one of the first things you said when you came on was the pain is so bad, I couldn't believe it is from what I was feeling. And I think you meant like emotions. Right. Um, one thing I want to let you know is the pain of diversion pain syndrome or the pain that comes from this diversion from your emotions can be just as intense and excruciating as any pain that comes from physical organic cause. So don't get hung up by the fact that this is so severe that it can't be coming from emotions. Uh, it's amazing how severe the, the pain can be uh, and, and it comes from emotions. Let me give you a quick example is, uh, like I mentioned when uh, Adam brought me on, just brought me on, I, I just got through, uh, a brief 
flare up of my own diversion pain syndrome because I got distracted by things and started not focusing on my emotions and focusing on the physical. I was driving to work uh, yesterday morning and the pain in my knees was like eight out of 10. Now that's not like 12 out of 10, but it was getting to the point where it was so intense that I was thinking, I don't think I can work today. I want to turn around and go back home. But then I remembered the techniques that I've known for a couple of years. I focused on those techniques. Within 30 seconds, the pain went down from an eight to a two. And I had a wonderful day at work yesterday. I went to work today. I had a wonderful day at work today. Most of the day, I had no pain. For a couple hours, it went up to like a two or three. Then it went back down to like basically nothing. The thing is, no matter how excruciating the pain is, it certainly can be coming from emotions. And you could just be 30 seconds to a minute away from that pain dropping down to a really low number when you press through with, and with the process. So, and that's, uh, that's important. Thank you. I, that's, it, it, I mean, it really is because it happens on the, the fly. And I want to point something out. Most of the time when people are pain-free, they stay that way forever. Dr. Mike. I'm the weird one. I'm the weird one. <laughs> I don't know about weird, but look, when he, he's, he was the, the toughest of the tough at the beginning to get pain free. Um, and when he said six weeks, by the way, 85% of people are pain free in six days. Well, in fairness, I had like 75 improvement within a week, 75% yeah. improvement a week. It took me longer to get the rest of the way, but yeah. The reason so the process I'm works. I'm just, is I'm just Mike a tough one. <laughs> is a thinker. I mean, he is yeah. a, he's a thinker, and, yeah. and, and, which is a good quality, but the problem is it's the disconnection from emotions that creates the pain, and, and Mike, you know, all respect to him for being willing because it was so against his model of the world to go through this and start to feel, I mean, it was like, you know, I, when Michelangelo was making David and had to start chipping things away, to, and that's... <laughs> So, so he was really, he was not made for this, but he was so determined to get rid of, to get pain free, he was willing to do it. So, but most people don't get flare ups. They just, the pain goes away and it stays away. And, and we, again, we, we highlight everybody, but Patricia, the bottom line is, um, I hope the stories give you some hope and I hope they allow you to see that there is, um, this is easy stuff. It doesn't seem like it, but you have to do the process. If you want to be enlightened, you can't read a book on, a mo on meditation. You got to do it. So it's a 28 day process, as you know, and every step is laid out day by day, do it. Do it exactly. And you're going to feel everything's set up for you. All you have to do is allow it to work for you. It's worked for thousands of people. All you have to do is allow it to work for you. Okay. All right. All right. By the way, I'll give, you, I'll give you a secret. I'll give you a, a hint. Okay. Okay. You're really pissed off. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so and how do you, how, why do you say that? Because it's almost, because I've been at this for a long time, by the way, see the giggle that's completely incongruent with being pissed off. Right. The what? The, what? the, the giggle. <laughs> oh, it's completely incongruent with being angry or enraged, right? So that's also a telltale sign of you getting away from the emotion. You don't wanna, you don't even wanna hear that, so you laugh. It pulls no, you No, I, I know that I am, I know that I am. Right. I, know, I know that I've had some things happen that have really, yes, exactly. Right, so it's almost always anger and rage. That's why I also know it because it's almost all, that's the emotion that we really tend to repress. You'll start with other things, but the bottom line is all roads lead to real rage. So uh, do the process, send in your updates every day. There's people waiting to reply every single day and help you through the process. Do it exactly and it's gonna work for you, okay? Okay. You feel good about that? Um, yeah, I just, I do. I just, um, I'm not sure how you're saying you don't have to, you just write the stuff. You don't have to go through it and get it out of your system. So called you just write it. When your unconscious mind knows that you consciously are aware of the emotions, 
the pain stops. If the point, if the purpose is to divert your attention from, from these dangerous, unbearable emotions to physical pain, right? If you're aware of the emotion, there's nothing from which to divert and it's over. That's it. Just, I'm going to tell us, I'm going to, I'm putting you back, I'm getting rid of you, Patricia, and then I'm going to tell a story, okay? Okay, goodbye. Uh, because it, thank you very much. I have to thank figure out now how much. to put you back as a regular old uh, attendee. Spectator. Okay. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. So <laughs> here's the thing, and, and Patricia is, I've been hearing this since I've been helping people for um, decades. And um, I'll tell you two, two quick stories. Number one, I remember this woman that came to me in pain and I knew her and she had been in pain for 27 years. She'd been in car accidents, she'd fallen off horses, diagnosed with bulging discs and whiplash, you name it, every, 27 years. So she comes to a session and we do the session in an hour. She is completely pain-free. Every single thing, go she, back, neck, all, completely pain-free. Completely. So I said, here's what you do. You keep doing this every, this was in the early days. It wasn't as well-defined as now, do this every day. Don't do anything else. Do this every day. It'll, you'll stay pain-free. After 28 days, it'll be your default. You, you'll never worry about it again. So. I get a note from her a week later and she says, oh, you know, I'm in horrible pain. It's not working. And she said, I've done this and this and this and tried this and this psychological thing and EFT and the, you know, all these other things. And I said, wait a minute. I said, all of your pain was gone. I said, just do this. What happened? And she goes, it can't be that simple. Now her pain went away in an hour. So it is that simple, but she decided she wasn't willing to kind of follow the process and go along and, and boom, she went out and the pain came back. And this is so typical because what I'm telling you, so I, some of you have some idea of what's going on here. Others of you, this is your first time here and you have no idea whatsoever. Um, and there was a story that was told to me and I use it here imagine I'm a driving instructor and, and teaching you how to drive. And you know, you're, you remember what it was like when you first learned how to drive and your hands are on the wheel and you're looking and trying to do everything and all that work is going on. And so now we're driving on the freeway for the first time. You're driving on the freeway and what, what do I say? Just look at the road, just pay attention to the road. And then what happens? All of a sudden there's some light rain starts to fall and you're, freaking out. You can, Adam, no, you know, let me pull over. I should pull over. No, just pay attention to the road. And you're going on and you're upset. Really give me something else to do. Let me pull over. Maybe you should drive. No, just pay attention to the road. And then after a little while, all of a sudden you get it. You're paying attention to the road and you're driving. Okay. And then you know what happens? The rain comes harder and I reach over and I turn on the wipers and the wipers are going like this and your head is doing this back and forth with the wipers. And I'm saying, just pay attention to the road and you're doing this and following all these other things. You said, please, you take over. Let me pull over something. You take the wheel and, and your head's going like this. And I'm just saying, just pay attention to the road. And then eventually you stop doing this and you just start paying attention to the road through all of the garbage that's going on and you're able to drive fine. We've all kind of been through that. And getting pain-free is the same thing. It's just, we're giving you a technique, but it's just pay attention to your emotions. Just pay attention. You, Patricia wants to do other, I can't believe it, other things. I should be climbing mountains and doing work and hard. Just focus on your emotions. Just focus on your emotions. Your head's gonna go back and forth. Kids going on, pain, all these things. Just focus on your emotions and the pain will go away. So it really is that simple. So let's uh, move on. By the way, I see no more hands raised. So remember, if you wanna, you're here for a reason. If you're, you're here for a reason, I've got questions, but a, a good number of you sent questions in advance. 
you're here for a reason. Don't leave this call, whether it's emotional pain, whether it's physical pain, if you have a problem, don't leave this webinar not getting what you can get. If you knew, this is not arrogant speaking, but if you knew how much I charge people to get this free time really is for you. And don't, listen, Dr. Mike. So um, don't leave here. Raise your hand. Send in your question. Let's, let us help you. So I'm going to read. I've got some questions here that were sent in advance. Um, okay. So this question came, I don't have a name actually, but I have the question. So it says, how to determine if and when an MRI shows severe lumbar stenosis to shift away from alternatives and reconsider surgery. Okay, so if I understand this person, he's got stenosis and he's trying to do other stuff. It doesn't appear he's had anything to do with zero pain now yet. And he, he, he needs to know if he should consider surgery. Um, so for those of you that are not uh, Dr. Mike, uh, stenosis is really just a narrowing of the discs in the spine. That's kind of a general idea of what it is. Here's the thing. It's a really common diagnosis. People, horrible pain, horrible pain. There's a lot of room there. So it would take a tremendous amount of narrowing for that to really cause pain. It's a common medical diagnosis. And I remember... I used to play squash, which is kind of like racquetball. And there was a guy with stenosis and what he would do before he would play he, horrible pain. So he would swim for 45 minutes and that would loosen him up. And then he could play squash and bang off of the walls and do all these things. And then 45 minutes after his pain would be excruciating again. Now he didn't realize how illogical that was because none of that expanded his spine. It didn't expand his spine. All it did as he was swimming was increase his blood flow. And, and in, in the path to pain or in diversion pain syndrome, we talked about the emotions and the stress and the tension. What it does is it constricts your blood vessels. There's less blood flow and there's oxygen in blood. So it's actually this slight benign oxygen deprivation called ischemia that is, is at the root of the pain or the emotions start the process. So all he was doing was moving around a little bit, his blood was flowing, his back would feel better. Had nothing to do with stenosis. I'm not sure I've ever seen a cause, a case of stenosis that has been the cause of pain. I'm sure there is. Somebody's got such narrowing, but I've never come across it. So I go back to your question, which is a great one. Like when do you shift away from alternatives to reconsider surgery? I'm not a doctor. I don't give medical advice. Dr. Mike could give medical advice. But what alternatives have you done, person? That's a question. Because most of the alternatives that people do are chiropractic and physical therapy and maybe some, some um, acupuncture. And then, you know, some people do a little, some alternative Reiki and things like this. Or EFT is a big popular one. Um, I've never seen any of those, well, that's not true. Rarely seen any of those work more than pain management. Feel a little better for a little while, pain comes back. A little better, pain comes back. So to answer your question, um, I'm, I'm assuming from this note, you haven't tried zero pain now. I'm not here to sell you anything. If you're obviously not on the call or you would come on and I would help you myself. So my answer to you is to try the process. Try zero pain now and Follow it exactly, and chances are in a very short period of time, you will be completely pain-free. I appreciate that question. Mike, you want to add anything to that? I, I was just, I, I agree with what you're saying because, you know, I'm not a spinal surgeon, but uh, it's a good point what you said that uh, you have not come across a case that you know of where the spinal stenosis was the cause of the pain. I also don't know if maybe someone could have such totally severe spinal stenosis that, you know, one out of a thousand could be from the spinal stenosis itself, but uh, what are you going to do about the major reconstructive surgery if that's the case? So I would try, I would do zero pain now first. Uh, I would say, you know, let's assume, because the odds are that this is from emotions. The odds are 
greatly that this has nothing to do with the spinal stenosis. So I would make that assumption and, and jump in and, and do the zero pay now. And I think there's a 99.9% .9 chance it's going to work. So Yeah, well, we know at least 97%. And we know that from what everything I've ever seen published about the surgeries is they have about a 24% success rate. And my mm -hmm. guess is that's embellished a little bit. So I would rather read a book, talk to Dr. Mike or me, watch some videos, then be sliced open, uh, mm -hmm. and then get the opioid. We're not even talking about that yet, but and, you know, I did a couple of interviews on radio stations today, as a matter of fact, and you know, this opioid crisis is every two and a half weeks is equivalent to 9-11. And uh, so the surgery is normally followed by an opioid prescription as well. So mm -hmm. uh, that would be my advice to you. I appreciate that question. I'm, I can't believe I'm not seeing hands up. What kind of, who's, why are we shy tonight? Is it Dr. Mike? He's intimidating. See, I'm scaring people away. Yeah. And hands get raised all the time. You see, he's intimidating. See, I said that. <laughs> all right. Um, okay, here's a non-physical pain question. It's a good one. I'm out of my relationship with my narcissist husband. Why do I still feel so horrible? This is a great question. And, and, and again, most of you don't, didn't know, at least that that's kind of where I came from. And I, I, I'll give, um, you know, I'll also let people, I'll let you all know that I just recently made a, a course on trauma and PTSD recovery. And um, anybody out there who's suffering, that very inexpensive, unlike a lot of zero pain now, I think it's a $300 course. 12 modules. It's, it's really, really, really good at helping any, look, we've all had trauma. You know, we've all had trauma. It doesn't have to be narcissistic abuse. It doesn't, I'm going to get to that in a second. It doesn't have to be PTSD. We've all had traumas in our lives and often suffer from it. And here is a phenomenal, easy course to get through that. And if you're interested in that, it's not, I, I made it for somebody else who, who, her mission is to help people who have suffered trauma and narcissism and, all, and abuse, all these things. So if you want that, you can go to Sir Thriver. So people that are, have trauma are trying to survive. I want them to thrive. So we put the two together and it's called SirThriver.com. And if you go to SirThriver.com, you can get that uh, trauma course. Now, let me get back to your question. And it's a really good question. So you're out of your real, so the narcissist is gone, right? But you still feel horrible. Well, the, you've been traumatized. And, you know, one of the greatest things, by the way, and, that, and that's, I'm gonna correct that, but for, I'm gonna start with you've been traumatized. One of the best things about the past is that it already happened. So whatever happened, happened, but it, it's, it's not happening now. So all of the problem, and this is not, this is not to, to um, in any way be critical, but the problem now lives between your ears, right? You're feeling miserable. You don't know why you've had all this abuse and it can be harrowing. I worked with you know, soldiers that have, you know, arms blown off and legs blown off and they've seen their friends die and uh, rape victims. And, and you know, uh, today the sort of thing is narcissistic abuse that, that people are just being abused and it's, they're put through horror, really horror, but it's in the past. So the reason you're still suffering is because you're living unconsciously as if the problem is happening now. So as soon as you're able to give yourself some space and change the recipes that you run automatically in your brain, and we all do that. When you got up this morning, you probably didn't put your toothbrush in your ear. Well, how did you know not to do that? A process automatically runs and the toothbrush goes in your mouth. Um, if it's going in your ear, there's a problem. So we run these strategies or they're like recipes in your brain. If you're gonna make a chocolate cake, it takes chocolate, milk, flour, sugar, and eggs to make this chocolate cake. And if you change any ingredient, if I take out chocolate, I put in strawberry, and get a different result, right? 
Now, if I want a strawberry cake, it's a good result. If I wanted a chocolate cake, it's not. But what we do in our brains and our minds is exactly the same. We run these strategies, we run these recipes, and they lead to very predictable results. So situations are arising with you. I don't, sorry, again, I don't, I don't have your name. Situations are arising, triggers are going off, and automatically in a microsecond, you run this strategy, this, this, this um, recipe, and it has you feeling you're saying horrible. So that could be sad, that could be afraid, it could be angry, all these things. Bottom line is you're not feeling the way that you want to feel to have a great life. Feelings are the result of what we do in our brain. They don't stand alone. They're the result of what we do in our brain. So if you want to change your feelings, all you have to do, it's really simple. Once again, it doesn't seem like it and you may feel hopeless right now coming out of this, it's the holidays, it's Christmas, it's New Year's, it's... But what I want you to know is by making a couple of simple changes, you can, you can, you can go from, I, listen, I was a basket case. I, one of these days I'll tell the whole story. I was, a, I was in, in, in no time, in no time, you can feel really, really good. And it happened so fast, little change couple of little changes and all of a sudden, one of my favorite responses I got from somebody, a little different than that, but he had a relationship that ended and he was miserable and he came down, he had one of those five hour sessions. And two days later, he sent me a note. He goes, I feel great and I don't know why. And that's the perfect answer. So a couple of little changes, uh, get that Sir Thrive dot, Sir Thriver, shoot, I think it's Sir Thriver dot com. Get that course, go through it the 12 months, you, your whole world will change. I'm not here to sell you something. If you were here, I would help you right now. But once again, you're apparently not here and sent your question in advance. So uh, thank you for that question. Um, and even Mike, I'm bouncing, you know, since Mike and I are kind of playing this together. And by the way, sorry, I'm bouncing back and forth. I noticed that there are other zero pain now master coach practitioners on this webinar. I can see the names. So if you want some help, look, I'm, a, I'm expensive, not for everybody. Just, you know, the last person, Wall Street guy, nothing. But, but there are really well-trained people. They're on this right now. Send us notes, we'll refer you to them, that are reasonable and terrific and can help you get better fast. So Let's talk about the change. Mike, you talked about um, the smoking. We also did, <laughs> you know, on, on, on some weight. So it took, you, you've you been smoking forever. How long did, how long were we together before you were literally a non-smoker? An hour? You mean in that one session? Yeah. Yeah, it was somewhere between an hour and two hours. So right. after being completely obsessed with smoking for 12 years, it took literally one to two hours to completely uh, solve that problem. And the change happens fast. I used to have something here in the office. Oh, it, is. it blew my mind how fast it happened. It's like one moment I was thinking the old way. And then you may, I don't know if you remember, but I think I just started smiling because all of a sudden I realized it totally changed in, in like a moment. The whole process took an hour or two, but the real change happened like in a moment. And that's the way... It's easier to make change very fast than slow. If, I, if you went to a therapist every Tuesday at one, you don't get better that fast. If, you re, if all of you, hopefully you're all old on the call, so I can tell you this. But when I was a kid, at least, we had these little decks of cards and each one had like a, a cartoon drawing on it. If you flick, you can't see my hands. If you flick the cards really fast, it made the cartoon move. If you handed a card to your therapist every week at one, you never get to see the, the, the quick movement. So it's easier to solve a big problem, whether it be physical pain or emotional pain, fast in like a session than it is over a long period of, of time. So again, it was a great question. Um, really, I am, I, this is the first time ever we've had such shyness. Okay, I'm gonna answer one or two more and then we're gonna go away if nobody wants to uh, raise their hand. Um, Let's see. 
Okay, this, here's, again, these, the questions are great that came in. Once in a while, I have restless legs when in bed. It's no big deal. I get up and walk for a while. What's bothering me is the fear that I now have of having restless legs every night. How do I free myself of the fear? Brilliant question. Um, your brain, my brain, Mike's brain, well, Mike's is a little different. He's got a bigger <laughs> than the rest of us, but the rest, our brain is a coincidence detector. So it looks for two things that happen simultaneously and then assigns meaning. I, I don't remember what I've talked about in the book or what, but I remember one time I was a big fat kid and my mother decided, you know, we were going to put a stop to this. So instead of eating spaghetti, she would make me, I'm still a little revolted. She would make <laughs> me Brussels, she would take Brussels sprouts and heat them up, not Brussels sprouts, uh, bean sprouts, yeah. and heat them up and then put spaghetti sauce on them. So it was like faux spaghetti. Thanks, mom. So one time I ate that and then I vomited. Now, I linked that to the bean sprouts, but really I came down with the flu that night. So that's really what happened. And for years and years and years, I, I mean, the thought of a bean sprout, I mean, it was just vile for me um, until I did these processes um, that I teach, frankly, and we use all the time to get over that and change it. But your question is like, so it happens. And here's the thing, when something happens and you think about it, okay, you're more likely, your brain is use it or lose it. Every time you have a thought, you're more likely to have that thought again. Your brain is kind of like, um, it's kind of like a dirt road that's never had any, any Jeep go over it. So the first time you're going through, you're all over the place trying to steer. But if you keep going over and over, eventually a path gets built and it's very easy to kind of stay in the path. And if, you, if it goes deep enough, it's even hard to get out of the path. And those are the neural pathways in your brain. So what happens is we want to interrupt that pattern. So you've made this link and now there's a fear and, and things start to spiral. Some people, you know, downward, right? So things start to spiral downward. And the fear is often the last thing to go. When people come with pain, whether restless legs, they come with back pain. The, the success in zero pain now parlance is Little or no pain, resumption of all normal physical activities, no treatments, and absence of fear, fear that you can hurt yourself. That's often, because remember, it isn't structural, so that's often the last thing to go. So your question, number one, is um, how do you free yourself of the fear? First of all, it's to realize that to realize the fear and to sort of be watch the fear. Uh, another easy way would be to have contact one of these trainers, contact Dr. Mike and have them do a process on you that will basically reverse how you think about that and restructure how you think about that. And that will help you not only eliminate the fear, my assumption is it will also eliminate the restless leg. So that would be the best thing. There are processes that can change that. But number one, know that that link you made isn't real. The fear isn't real. Yes, you had restless leg. I want to make sure I'm not. Once in a while. So now there's the fear and it becomes more and it becomes more. So we want to stop that fear now. There are great processes that all of these certified master practitioner trainers can do with you to knock that fear down right now. By the way, anybody that is... Um, interested in learning how to be a master if you go to the zero pain now website and go to the certification you can get some information on that because we are training select people okay i see that um the hands what listen you two i see two of you there what took you waited for 50 minutes before you raised your hand how dare you okay um i'm playing with you so i'm going to bring you on so i see i'm going to bring you both on and i'm hoping we're going to do this fairly quickly so I'm gonna start with Sherry. So Sherry, I'm about ready to bring you on. So be ready, here's what you get. 
just you know, do a little of it, just like Dr. Mike just did. <laughs> By the way, when you did that, Dr. Mike, uh huh, it really didn't push your hair back. I just it didn't work. <laughs> okay. Okay, Sherry, you ready to go? Oh, yeah, you are there. Okay, so let's bring you on. See what you got. And where's Sherry? There. There she is. Okay, Sherry, you have a microphone somewhere on your screen you need to click on to unmute yourself. Uh, yes, yeah, there, there it is. Are. There she is. Hi, Sherry. Hi. Hi. Uh, I guess my question is, I've done the, the whole program twice. Wait, wait, so tell me what program, so I know, what, what are we talking the about? The Zero Pain Now program. And which um, program did you do? Which one? The Zero Pain Now. Wh the which program? Day. Right, but which, do you, like what did you get? So I know what you... Like, oh, I got the books and the CDs, the, the workbook, the book three, and the CD. Three, the three, three CDs and an online course? Yes. <clears throat> well, I and, got the book, the actual book and the actual workbook. Right, and you, but you had the online course. And the, okay, so I want to know what program. Yes. Okay, so you're saying you did that twice. I did. And, I, the very first time I did it, it was like, took me about a month. And <clears throat> I had persistent um, hip pain uh, that wouldn't go away, but I just kept doing it and it, and, and it worked. And then I stopped doing it. <laughs> Okay, wait a minute. So, 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 so it worked, meant you felt better. Yes. And then you stopped doing the process. Yes. <clears throat> and then all the pain came back. Oh, gosh. <laughs> By the way, Mike, should we, should we just clap together and congratulate yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So, all right. I, by the way, I think you'll probably answer your own question because it seems to me it's too... Okay, now go ahead. Well, and then I did, I did it a second time. What, took, how, uh, how long? Sorry, I'm doing this to you. How long before you did it the second time? It was probably eight or nine months. Uh, yeah, that's that's exactly like if 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 Doctor Mike had a prescription pad, he would say if the pain goes away, and then if the pain comes back, wait eight or nine months. That's exactly. <laughs> <what I'm doing. laughs> By the way, we, we can have some fun with this. Yes, so, yes. We're not. I'm, so I'm never know. laughing at you. I'm I'm pointing out. Right for everybody kind of the so all right so continue right and then then um then i got to where and this is the reason why i hadn't done it I, i've tried and tried again to do it uh, <clears throat> but the when i when i start to write all that down and i you know it feels like i'm dredging up you know the emotions and writing it down um that i feel worse after emotionally Okay, so and so then I so then I don't do it, and so, <laughs> so it's like, but ah, oh, I'm just I've had chronic pain for thirty years. All and right, can I, can I, for the sake of time, can I cut you off? Sure. All right. So we know you did a you did a psychological process, and your pain went away, right? Yes. Yeah. So right. can we assume from that 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 is proof that there couldn't be anything structurally? wrong with you because it would be impossible you didn't you know no reading the book i did not sneak in there and do surgery on you right no <laughs> okay so you do it the pain goes away you stop doing it the pain comes back okay sometimes that happens not very often but sometimes so what would you tell if you were the if i said here sherry i'm going to give you a thousand dollars tell me why that happened what would you tell me because I started why. stuffing the emotion again and yeah. not paying attention. Yeah. yeah, if you change what you do, thank you. See, you you don't need me. If, <laughs> if if you if you change what you do in your brain, and your pain goes away, if you go back to doing things the old way, then your pain will come back. So, what would ha I mean? Look, I don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure this out. Basically. You did it. You didn't do it long enough for it to become, you'd had it a long time. You didn't do it long enough for it to become your kind of default way of paying attention to your emotions. And then the pain came back. It's really just a signal to go, hey, Sherry, knucklehead, uh, focus on, you know, focus on me, the emotion. And the pain would go away again. So it is really as simple. Look, there's, no, we know you've had chronic pain for all those years. You've used the process and got pain free. Now, 
you don't like the way you feel when, you're, when the emotions are arising. I get that. Here's something for you to know. And people don't realize, they let their emotions take them on. Have you ever been to a train station, Sherry? Yes. So what happens at a train station? You, you, you're sta you stand on the platform, right? Yes. And what happens? Trains come, <clears throat> trains go? Yes. Do you have to get on the train? No. No, you could stand there and watch the trains come and go, right? Right. Those emotions you're feeling are the same way. See, okay. all of a sudden the train door opens and it's, what's the emotion that you, you know what it is? What's the one that just sends you spiraling that has you feeling crummy? Which emotion? Yeah, just name it. Grief. Grief, okay. So all of a sudden the door opens and it's the grief train. And inside are like all your best friends come on sherry let's go for the ride let's go feel grief you know and the next thing you know you feel like crap you're you don't have to i can i can pay attention right now i'm sitting here right now and i'm taking a quick check i've done this a few times before and in my stomach is a ball of rage i would like to take out a baseball bat and just start breaking things now I have a business, I've got a family, I've got traffic, I've got, you know, I've got employees, you know, all over the world, I got, you know, all that stuff. So I can notice that right now. Now, it is, I'm also feeling great. I'm having a good time with you and having a good time with everybody else. I'm not hopping on that train. I can know, I am really, really pissed off in my, I mean, as I notice it just tremendously. Okay, so what? I, I recognize that. I'm hanging with you. I'm hanging with Dr. Mike. I'm hanging with people from all over the world. I don't have to go for that ride. So I'm going to, I'm going to suggest. So, so just knowing that just, you're now conscious of that. By the way, when you did the process, I want honesty okay. of those 28 days when you were supposed to, maybe you did, send in updates for, for feedback every day from the staff. How many of those 28 days did you send that in? None. Oh, oh. So, you know, <laughs> None. so you didn't do zero pain now, you did Sherry pain now. <laughs> right. Sherry pain now hasn't been tested nearly as much. Zero <laughs> pain now, usually the pain goes away and it stays away forever. Sherry right. pain now, it goes away and it comes back. Yes. Right? <laughs> There's a right. reason. Now, how many times, look, it, it, you don't mind my playing with you a little bit, right? No. <laughs> how many times did you see in the instructions, in my video? By the way, did you watch all the videos? Yes, I did. Okay, good. How many times did I say follow exactly as written? <laughs> exactly. Every day. <laughs> yes. So, oh, but you just, <laughs> the most valuable part is the support. Right. All right. So, just start the process, let us help you, send in your updates, get pain-free, and you better be on the next webinar dancing, saying how great you are, okay? Okay. Neil, now get off of my screen, no, no. Thank you, Thank you for sharing. Thank you. All right, let me see if I can get you back. And then, uh, you know, it's funny, thanks again. It's so funny, I hear this every day. You know, people, she's all those years and she's better, but. They don't, you know, she, again, we're humans and we just do, we all do these kind of silly things. But, not, but if you got something and you got a, prof, a professional, somebody trained to help you every day and you never send one in, what do you expect? So, but even on her own with no help, she made the pain go away. And had she just kept doing it, she would have been done for good. Okay, I think there is one more hand and I want to, let's see, I see, I just want to make sure. Um, uh, Patri okay, Patricia said, how can I talk with someone who can talk me through the process? If you go, Patricia, to the Zero Pain Now site, to the program catalog, to the private session, just send a note in and we'll refer you to, uh, let me just see who's still on. The, if they didn't stay on the call, I'm not giving them a referral. All right, Dan's here and TJ's here and Dr. Mike's here. So those are the three names you're going to get. So contact us for that. Okay, uh, 
we're going to take one more person and it is going to be Cecile, uh, Cecile, your hand is up. So Cecile, I'm bringing you on. Are you ready? Here you come. Mike, do you want to do your hair again just to make sure you're ready for Cecile? <laughs> Good. Okay. There she comes. And by the way, many, sometimes people um, notice, hi, Cecile. Oh, I see you there. Un, un, look for your microphone and click on it. Somewhere it's there. Somewhere on your screen, you got to click on the microphone. Looks like an old fashioned microphone. There it is. No? No. Oh, come on, Cecile. Pressure, pressure's on. We're all looking. No, no, I'm just somewhere. I don't know where it is because I don't, I have a different screen. It's in my lower left. But somewhere is a microphone and you have to click on it to unmute yourself. And I'm going to talk for a second and hope you do that. If not, there you, there oh, you go. All right. Okay. Hi, Cecile. All right, I'm there. Welcome. I'm the one that asked. I'm the one that put, that asked the question about the fear. I was, I was the, the fear, the fear of getting, uh, staying yeah. stuck in the fear. So you answered my question already. So thank you very much. And I just want to add that uh, I did read your book Zero Pain Now, and it worked for me, and I followed it exactly. So. Uh, anyone hearing me, it really worked. I've been pain free for a, at least a year and a half now. Oh, Cecile. Come back. That's how I want to end this call. And you were able to do all that with half a face. That's what's even <laughs> by myself. Yeah, and follow the book, but it's it really works. Uh, thank you. So, and by the way, most people need the support of the program. You did it with the book. Congratulations, yeah. and um, thank you for you know that's. Look, there is no better way to end this than, than that. And, and I mean, we hear, I hear that every day. I get stories every day. And it's, it's what gets, like all of us, Mike and Dan, as I say, is on the call and, and TJ's on the call. And it's what, it's, you know, it's what keeps us, we'd all love to make a zillion dollars, but, but, but helping people is what, what has us feeling so good. Uh, I'll end with a little story, not that I can cap what you said, but, there was a woman, she was this adorable 27-year-old girl at the time, and she was studying to be a, an MFT, marriage family therapist, and, and she had this tremendous fear of loud noises. She was this adorable 27-year-old girl, and she was dating a guy with two kids, and she was going to end the relationship because the kids kept bringing home balloons, and the, the thought of balloons blowing, you know, breaking, whatever, the noise, she couldn't take it. And it was torture for her. Sounds like nothing to us, but it was torture for her. So she drove all the way down from, she drove 500 miles to come see me. And I helped her and got over it. And, and uh, I asked her, by the way, it was, I said, how, how will you know that you'll be done with this? And she said, I'll be able to shoot a gun. She never had a gun in her hand. You know, it wasn't a gun <laughs> person. So she, she sent me a picture at a gun range, you know, that, that so, She's then since gone on and become a successful MFT and helping all kinds of people. And she sent me a note two or three days ago and she said, a patient came in and she mentioned you, well, not a referral, she mentioned you by name and she'd gotten the program and she used it with her young son who had all kinds of pain and the pain went away and she was so happy and glowing. And you know, she's talking to this person not knowing that there's any connection there. But every day people like you send in notes that, you know, the pain is gone. It stays gone. There's a life. One of my favorite, anybody goes to the website and they see, uh, God, what's her name? Jen. Uh, Jen was, was the testimonial photo on a wheelchair website. Had to leave the, you know, and, and she used the same program that, I forgot who was on last, that um, um, Sherry used, the Advanced Virtual Session. And in two weeks, she was out of the wheelchair and she was dancing and she got to move back with her. I mean, it was just crazy. So um, thank you for, for thank you for sending the question. Thank you for coming on and, and sharing that. And may you stay pain-free forever. And uh, I'm gonna send you, I'm, thank you. I'm gonna send you away since you already had your, your question you. answered. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I just, thank you again. Uh, I'm going to pull this thing to an end. I want to thank, I want to thank everybody for coming and, and I hope, 
more than anything else, got some benefit from tonight. There was something you heard that was able to give you a lift or a change or an idea or an aha, something. Um, we have a lot of people. It's not just me. We have a lot of people. We have people trained. Again, we're still looking for great people that, that, that want to be trained as masters. But we got a lot of people here who only care about you being pain-free, whether that's emotional pain, whether it's physical pain. Um, we just care. And we want you to feel good. And we want you to be happy. And we want you to have a smile on your face. And pain, any kind of pain, it gets in the way of that. It just covers up the, the, the happy, the great that's already there. So there's a lot of us here. Reach out. And there's all kinds of excuses. I can think of a thousand excuses. The money, the time. The... If your life isn't the way you want it to be, reach out. We've got all different, you know. We'll figure out a way to help you as long as you want. Know. So, Dr. Mike, is there something you would like to um, say as we end this? <laughs> Uh, nothing in particular except for this has been really great and uh, I want to thank you because uh, you know you've made a big difference in my life and it's really cool especially the last woman uh, I don't see your name right now but how she was able to get completely pain-free just by reading the book and it just really encourages me and uh, makes me I'm just so excited right now about helping people get free from pain and helping people with other types of problems also it's just it's i can't think of anything else i'd rather be doing and i i i feel as i literally get a tear when i think i just we're all in the same boat and every client every mayo patient whatever that i've ever worked with they you all changed my life as well so i want to thank everybody for being here i am happy to do these as often as you like the goal is to help people we'll do them maybe we'll do them a couple of times a month going into 2018 and and just uh, have people come. So once again, I wanna thank you all. I wish you a happy, happy, happy holiday. If you need some help, we're here, and I'll look forward to seeing you uh, in the new year. So once again, thanks everybody, and we'll see you next so time. Long. Bye. Bye.